Hello fellow Simmers, it's Samuel Beeman of BLS here and welcome to Brighton where we're going to be taking another look at the DTG Class 700 for a part two of my first look review. So as you're all aware I have done part one of this review and uh, yeah I quite regularly commented about the sounds as seen here. What the hell? That's not a 700 sound. Um, that's that's not a class 700 sound. <laughs> what the f... It's got completely the wrong sound set on it. I'm sorry, am I going mad? Guys, can somebody please like confirm this to me in the comments section? Because I'm pretty certain that these are known as a Desiro. And I'm pretty certain that Desiros have that spaceship sounding sound, you know, like the 450s or 444s. But this sounds absolutely nothing like that. Is, is that recycled Hitachi sounds from the Favisham class? I don't believe this. So as you heard, I spoke about how the sounds were from the class 395 from the Favisham route, the uh, Hitachi crap basically, which just sounds terrible to be honest and doesn't sound anything like a 700 which is true because a 700 does not sound anything like an Hitachi unit so yeah incorrect sounds and obviously I commented about how it doesn't have that sound that uh, you know that that spaceship sounding sound that a 450 slash 444 makes Okay, but apparently, according to members of the community in RSUG and the official train simulators, they mentioned in a comment stating how that the DC version of the 700s sound different to the AC. So apparently the DC ones have that spaceship sounding sound that the 700s ideally should be making. So we're going to find that out in this second part of the review. And yeah, let's take a look and have a listen to those sounds. So let's unpause the game and get started. So before I um, I get into driving this, I'm just gonna I'm, I'm gonna show you something that I didn't actually pick up on part one of my review. Just 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 have a listen to this. Okay, so not only is it the wrong sound, but have a listen to when the doors close. Did you hear that? So, basically, um, yeah, the door closing sound is identical to the door opening sound. So, can someone please tell me how that works? Because... That that just that just doesn't happen in real life, does it? There you go. So that's another issue I did pick up on. Uh, so yeah, it's just another terrible addition to this rather terrible DLC. Anyway, uh, another issue I did notice, and I was sort of thinking about, was these wheels. Now, 
it doesn't look like they're actually sat on the rails properly. It looks more like the wheels are actually sinking through the rails. Like the model isn't sat on the rails properly. It's like sunk through them. Can we confirm that this is a bug? Does it does does this look like to you guys that it is sunk into the rails a bit? Because it does. Yeah, it doesn't look quite right, does it really? So yeah, let me know. Anyway, enough with that. And we obviously we don't have to look around the model because we already did that in part one. And if you guys want to see my initial thoughts of the model itself, then please do head over to part one of this video. I shall link part one in the description of the video so you guys can go and look back and watch it. If obviously that you've you've missed it. Anyway, we shall head into our cab. This time I've actually changed our field of view a little bit so it doesn't look so crushed in anymore. So we can actually, you know, look at the cab proper. And yeah, it's, well, we do have some blinds. I, I didn't see that last time. Also, apparently it does have changeable destinations on F8 and F7. So should we have a look at that quickly? Yeah, there we go. So that's quite a nice feature. I like how they've added that in. So obviously we're going to London, Victoria. So yes, we want that destination there. So that is a nice touch that's been added in. Obviously we want our daylights as well. And before we depart, we must also make sure that our marker lights are on. Another thing I will say is that the light texturing is absolutely trash. So as you can see, these are supposed to be LED lights, but it's literally just like a jumbled up, pixelated pile of shit texturing. So yeah not the best in the world anyway let's get back into our train and move off and get ourselves moving so put our master key in put ourselves into forward and now we shall depart so let's take a listen shall we Hang on a minute. Okay, so yeah, as you can hear, basically the same as what I said in the last video. We have no track rumble sounds, we have no rail joint sounds, and we have no flange squeal sounds either. Which just adds to how terrible this DLC really is. And also, would you look at that? I've put the power into neutral, so it's now 0% throttle, and we still have the spaceship sound going, the traction motors. So, can someone please explain to me how that is even remotely possible? How a traction motor is, there must be some sort of fault with this unit then, because I'm not applying power, and yet the sound set thinks I'm applying power. Is it seriously just going to repeat the same sound? See, it's just so boring. There's no rumble sound. It is just going to constantly make that, that UFO sound, isn't it? Like there's no cutoff. It's also very clunky this 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 throttle. It's it's 
So there you go, I've got power off now. But the traction motors are still whining. Even though the power's on 0%. What the bloody hell? And this is 11.99 guys. This is full price. Absolutely appalling. I'll give them credit for the digital digital screens here. They actually work properly. I'll give them credit for that. No sound change when you open the windows, look. What else do we have in here? I didn't may may have missed in my last review. Wiper switch. Okay, slow. Oh, fast, okay. Sort of a, you can vary the speed of the wipers. Okay, that's quite fancy, I quite like that. It's a good feature to have. I mean, it does have potential, I mean it does have relatively nice features, for example the cab lights where you, you can dim it or you can make it go brighter. I quite like that feature as well and you know the, like stuff like the, the wipers being changeable speeds, that's a cool feature too. But. Apart from that, it's still quite limited. I mean, I'll give him credit for using the master key as well, at least that's in there. And the fact that you have to go into the rear cab to put the markers on is, is, is another nice touch to it. But, so the majority of the cab controls don't actually work. So you can't use any of this or any of this. You know, a majority of the buttons don't actually work. The sounds, as I said in the previous video, are atrocious. Absolutely terrible. Passenger view, very basic. You can only turn a certain amount of degrees. Don't have any animations on the, um, on the signs. Oh, and this is something you'll laugh at. In fact, I stopped the train. This is something you'll laugh at, I'll show you. In fact, we'll go we'll go through past this tunnel first. In fact, we've got a station coming up soon. Oh, it just sounds terrible. Oh, it's awful. So, obviously, clearly you can hear that these are recycled class 450 sounds from the original Portsmouth Direct Line route that was made in Railworks 2 days. So this sound set was like produced in something like 2008-2009 sort of era. So they're using sounds from like decades ago for this. And, and this is something that, will really, that really, really does make me laugh is the fact that the main DTG offices are based in Chatham and yet class 700s come through Chatham. So it just shows how lazy they are. I mean, why they couldn't just get their asses out of the office and go and film and record or wh whatever they do to get sounds from a class 700. Why they couldn't do that is just, it's beyond me. It's quite simple to just go out and record something. Anyway, yes, yeah, so we're coming up to Hazzocks, so we're going to halt our train into Hazzocks. So the way it drives, it basically drives like a go-kart, as Alan Thompson said in his written-up review on ATS. 
it is pretty awful. It's just like a standard default unit, how it drives. It's just very, it's very standard, very basic. Not very realistic at all. As I said in the previous part, it has no immersion whatsoever. It's boring, the textures are trash, it sounds crap. Yeah, it's, it's very, um, very, very basic. Definitely not worth $11.99. If you're going to get this unit, like, for example, you really want it, like, for AI or something, then, yeah, pay the full price. But, if, if you're just going to get it to use it and drive it, wait until the sales guys wait until it goes down to like 4.99 because it's really not worth getting it for 12 quid those deceleration sounds are awful but I'll give it credit for having the brake squeal as we come to a halt. Anyway, as I was going, as I was saying, what I was going to show you now. Look at this. Now this is this is hilarious. This is. Thank you for travelling with us today. Please mind the gap when exiting the doors. Exiting. It's just incredible, isn't it? Really, you know. So let me just let me just rephrase this here. The appropriate thing that it should have said is please mind the gap when leaving the train. I think that's that's the more appropriate thing to say on that. Exiting the doors <laughs> makes no sense. So again, it's just it's it, it's stuff like this which just makes you think how the bloody hell has that gone through the testers. I mean, DTG's testing team, just crap. They obviously do not have a fucking clue what they're doing. Sorry, do excuse my French, but it's true. So, yeah. Uh, overall, as I say, really crap DLC. Don't buy it unless it's in the sale. Uh, as I say, you know, areas texturing is pants. Very bland. Uh, yeah, uh, it's got a few nice touches. For example, as I say, the the fact you can change the destinations, or or you've got the wiper speed, or you've got the cab brightness, and bits and pieces like that, independently switchable markers. But the sounds are just terrible, and the rest of it is just goddamn awful. It really is. So yeah, I think that really concludes my look of the class 700 i mean at least the dc version has that spaceship kind of sound but again it doesn't really make much of a difference because it still sounds terrible it still don't sound right it still doesn't have no rail joint sounds it still doesn't have no track rumble or anything like that no flange squeal there's no immersion in it whatsoever this is not great this is not good at all and they say that it's you know it's great and it's uh, and you know you can get the ultimate experience for modern commuter traffic with this pack no you can't it's 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 not good it's not good at all so thank you guys this has been samuel beeman of bls do hope you've enjoyed this video don't forget to comment like and subscribe check out our socials at discord facebook and also look at our website as well and we've had a recent release which some of you will enjoy especially for the modern fans We've got a Network Rail Test Train Stock Pack, which has just been released on our website. And it's definitely worth going to get that because it's honestly taken us about six months to release that because of issues constantly with it. And it is a really good pack and I really recommend going and grabbing it. So it's been made by Sam Arna and it includes multiple different Mark 1 coaches and Mark 2s in network, network Rail livery. And then you've got the class 37s, 37610 and 37612 with the wire pack lights being added in there as well. So it's a great train set pack and definitely worth getting. So yeah, thanks for watching. This has been Samuel Beeman here. Goodbye for now.